Welcome back. Let's take a look at a recent game um, by Oh Hi There, aka Shogi Dad, who's recently started a channel on YouTube. Um, so before I go into this, again, similar to how like uh, Shogi Harbor would say, like she's not bullying Nairok, she's reminding that it's important to do the post game analysis and discussion. Um, I think that this is kind of something uh, this video might also serve to help remember. So, um, yeah, doing the post-game discussion with the opponent can be useful. Um, obviously, there's language barriers, and that gets a lot more complicated with online play. And it's good to go to real-life places like Shogi Dad does. Um, so... My object here isn't to like bully or anything or to like say that I know something better or something like that. It's just to try to share some of the lessons that have been passed down to me so far. So let's take a look at this game. Also, welcome. So, yeah, our proverb that we randomly rolled at the beginning of this was entice the gold diagonally forward. Makes sense because the higher the gold rises, uh, the less effective it tends to be. Um, yeah, I have no idea what's going on in this opening. Yes, I play this opening. Yes, I need to relearn it. No, I'm not overly concerned about it. It's good that the bishop diagonal is open, because you want to use your bishop on an open line, and the rook is as open as that's going to get. We're building a castle, that's good. Bringing out the silver, that's all. Looks all well and good. Um, it's true that after a game you could flip on an engine of your choosing and ask it for analyses and they'll give you percentages. And, I mean, I guess decades ago, back in the database age, when databases were first coming out for chess and engines were everywhere and every engine had its own evaluation and every database would improve the power of your engine and also help you train specific openings or repertoires and all that. Um, while databases and engines were both evolving um, decades ago with chess, there was it's easy to get sucked into the idea that just look at the number that the engine gives you and somehow it'll make sense. Or look at the database and if you could just memorize this database or if you went to a bookstore and you picked modern chess openings or whatever off the shelf, just memorize this book and you'll be fine. Or just look at what the engine's saying, and you'll get all the key ideas from that. And one thing that's kind of interesting about the Shoki uh, community, I guess whether in Japan or whether we're referring to the Shoki Harbor community, is the interest in collective analyses with the opponent and bringing games on a weekly basis um, to uh, the community to have them refute in front of an audience. That's a big thing that we tend to do a lot, uh, to try to promote the knowledge that Shogi Harbor, um, Karalia Fortan, has brought to us, along with everybody else she references that have helped promote Shogi to the rest of the world. So uh, it's in that kind of spirit that I'm attempting to do this analysis here. Um, I'll try to explain things as best as I can from the lessons I've learned. But it's been a while since I've played, and I might not be the best teacher, or I might not remember everything accurately, so I will link to other sources, encourage checking them out too. So yeah, again, I don't really know what's going on with this opening. The one thing I do see, well, two things. One, we've started to build a castle. That's good. There is a proverb that an early escape of the king is worth eight moves. And so this king has escaped very far to safety. This king is asking for trouble, um, particularly because the other thing we note is we see one, two, three, four pieces, um, not even including the pawns to support, but we just have four pieces actively fighting and what are we fighting against? We're fighting against one, two, three pieces. Yeah. Oh, thank you. 
Yeah, I forgot I had that translation for viewers in case we ever have a multilingual audience. So glad to see you enjoy that kanji font there. I'm sorry, there's a kanji font on these pieces too. Um, uh, Lee Shogi, and it looks beautiful. But yeah, we've got four attackers against three defenders, not even including these other two defensive golds out here. They're defensive, not attacking, but yeah, we've got a huge attacking force. Our king is very safe. Um, and I guess I'll touch on the other concept that uh, I remember that Shogi Harper shared with us, which is attacking speed, like speed to mate. How do you even try to estimate speed to mate? Like, here we are in the opening. It's a bit premature to look at that, but we want to look at, have some basic estimate for how fast is my attack, how fast is my opponent's attack. This is something that you'll have to repeatedly evaluate throughout a game um, and uh, adapt your attacking or defensive strategy according to however your attack and their counterattack or vice versa are going. So, how do we measure that? Well, um, one way to do this is with null move pruning. Um, so, we assume the opponent is not doing anything. How many moves, without hanging a piece along the way, how many turns is it going to take to get an attack going? So let's back up here. Uh, we just moved, it's the opponent's turn here. How many turns is it going to take for an opponent's piece to safely land a check against our king? And this is an exercise that a 90s software Maurice Ashley teaches chess, also instills in chess players. How many moves does it take to safely capture all these pieces or safely check the opponent's king and things like that? Just to make sure that children understand the mechanics of how the chess pieces move, it's not really some deep strategic thing. But in Shogi, because we have one, two ranged pieces, and the rest of our pieces are not ranged pieces, I mean, I guess there's the lance, but since we have so few ranged pieces, it helps to be able to count the speed to mate. Um, so, or the speed of an attack. So, to get to this king without sacrificing pieces, the fastest I can see for Gota here is one, two, three, four. It's going to take four moves for this to attack this king. Um, and yeah, if we look at Santa here, it, it's not any faster at the moment, actually. Um, I can't seem to find an easy way to get to this king, even though it's right in the thick of the heat of the battle. But once the opponent pushes this forward, like we can see the speed to get um, a check in safely without hanging something, that's two moves. And one of them is the opponent also responding to our capture. So like our speed is one, the opponent's speed is still four. So we already have a major, th this is just a very, very primitive estimate but our attack is doing fantastically, and the opponent's attack, which has fewer pieces than our attack has, isn't going very far just yet. And we have started to build a castle, so, like, we're doing great. Um, yeah, the bishop exchange makes sense to me. I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, oh. Yeah, around this point, I was so excited about uh, the speed of this attack. I was wondering, could we get away with this? Like, can we get away with murder here? Um, so, like, we're threatening this, threatening that, gonna promote. If the rook comes back, we got something like this. If it goes back again, we got like that. Like, can we get away with this? I don't know. Uh, sometimes it works. It's probably not worth looking at, but sometimes it's just amazing what you can get away with here. Um, but... I guess, secondly, um, Shogi Dad did stumble upon this a couple moves later. It looks excellent here, too. This cuts uh, the single thread but that connects the two attackers here. So, um, yeah, it's also possible to throw this in 
uh, get this in one move faster if you wanted to go this way, but it is kind of risky because, again, uh, the opponent could attack your king and maybe they've got some pawn drop stuff and it's kind of scary. And I don't know if I'd go with this, but it's just an idea or an option. Um, yeah, uh, this bishop drops fine. It's all good. Um, and yeah, we did end up taking a similar path here. Silver takes, um, yeah, silver takes. And then Shogi Dad had commented how uh, he would may have preferred instead of uh, this capture, which uh, maybe there's some complex tactics. I'm not sure. This kind of drew away from the castle support, so I'm a little bit nervous about it. But if we exchange rooks, I guess I'm just as nervous. Uh, so what's my conclusion? I don't know. I don't know this opening. It's complicated. Um, but backing up, I mean, this is all fine. It's fine and it's okay. But um, yeah, I don't know. I probably shouldn't fixate on the opening because I, I just don't know it. Um, yeah, uh, he did correctly point out that if this uh, this moves, that there is this fork and that's somewhat problematic although maybe it's fine too no it's not no never mind um so yeah you could consider something like this but again you're spending time defending uh from a superior attacking position so uh i started to look at like this which again threatens this drop and like this silver is in a really awkward position uh a big idea with the central vanguard pawn is you kind of want to have the vanguard pawn just sitting there supporting your attack that way you can attack on an adjacent file um the idea normally isn't to burst through rambo style and knock out all the opposing pieces you typically need a little bit of help to get that done so typically this kind of just sits here um, and I don't think I'm making that up. Like, I've watched hundreds of videos by Moronaka on his YouTube channel. And I don't think I've seen something like this. Uh, I've seen games that were brought on Shogi Sunday and brought to our Shogi Harbor community. I haven't... I mean, yes, I've pushed Pawn 5-5. Five five, and I've got a ton of my own games where everything just immediately goes south when I do this sort of thing. Um, so I tend to hesitate to, like, push the pawn beyond 5-5 five five or trade it off. I try to keep it there and bring an attack on an adjacent file because that seems to work a lot better. Um, oh, yeah, I think there are some basic tutorials on Lee Shogi as well as Play Shogi. Is it .org or .com? I forget. Um, but yeah, there are basic tutorials on how pieces move here, too. Um, the Play Shogi tutorials are also a well-kept secret. I don't know why, but when I stumbled upon them, I was quite impressed. Um, I guess, I don't know if this is a Shogi proverb. I've heard this before, he who captures first loses ground. So this capture gives up space. It's kind of unfortunate. Um... I've played enough chess tournaments over many years where uh, where I've not considered all my candidate moves before making a move, and it can be kind of rough afterward, and you kind of regret, I wish I'd thought of something better or different. Um, so, like, this is one candidate, but you need to... Uh, at least I need to look at more than one candidate to make sure I'm doing the right thing. And it's really hard to know what all the right candidates are if you aren't frequently doing post-game analysis with opponents or getting your games reviewed by humans. If you're just kind of relying on databases, it's hard to get all the greatest ideas. And again, I came from a position of trying to learn from databases and engines and books and didn't really... I, I struggled with learning from chess coaches or mentors and friends and such. Um, took me the longest time to appreciate. Just take the advice you're given, ask questions, don't be too embarrassed to do it. Um, 
yeah, it took me forever to start appreciating that, um, yeah, it's fine to have questions and be skeptical about things and be open and curious, but also be like, be open to accepting advice. Uh, because even if it's free advice, uh, if it's from mentors and friends and such, it's often quite good. Um, I mean, if it's your, if these are good friends you're talking about. Um, so anyway, um, this is another candidate. And so the reason I'm considering this is this kind of looks like a normal position, except somehow the pawn's just missing on 5-5. Five five. Uh, I guess if they drop it, you just move up or something. Oh, welcome. Yes. This is me attempting to do post-game analysis and try to mention, like, everybody that's helped me learn over the years. Uh, I did sign up in advance of this game. I had signed up for the upcoming weekly ladder this weekend, so that'll be good fun, too. It's been a while since I've partaken in that, but again, that has post-game analysis and discussion. It's great. Um, so, yeah, we're analyzing game by Shogi Dad oh hi there because there were just a lot of ideas I had and it just reminded me I need to be grateful for uh, the advice that was given to me by so many folks so I constantly in the discord server and plugging uh, people join this Shogi ladder thing it's the greatest thing out there the supernova tournament on 81 dojo is a lot of fun too but um, if you want your games analyzed reviewed discussed and such um, yeah, it's good to play in the ladder and get a higher rated and lower rated opponent to play against and have a healthy conversation about it. Or if you don't like for that, you could always submit games to Shogi Sunday for review, whether you can make it there or not. Um, they we're always looking for games. Um, I think we've had to cancel Sunday a few times because we just haven't had any games to review and it's been kind of sad, but uh, oh well. But, okay, so let's get beyond the opening, because, again, there's only so much I can know about openings, and uh, it's really kind of inconsequential, because middle games and end games are so enormous in Shogi anyway. So we get this position where we've accidentally helped the silver up a little bit. It's no big deal. Yeah, we get a nice counterattack going. The opponent breaks our castle. Um... I think we're correct to not exchange rooks here. I'd be terrified to exchange, so I think it's right. I think this is great. Um, and the opponent challenges what we've done. <laughs> and so this is our big, our first big confrontation of the game. Big pivotal moment of like, oh no, what's going on? Um, again... Yeah, it's kind of hard to measure the speed to mate or the speed of an attack for both sides. Again, I think for Gota, it's still going to be this one, two, three, four idea. For Senta, I'm not. I don't know. Like, yeah, we could pick up a lance and a knight, and they could drop the knight, drop the lance. So I guess four moves. So we're winning pieces and. Um, well, I guess hitting the rook, that's giving us another free move. So maybe we count this as like three. So our move, our attack is one move faster to give check safely than our opponent's attack is. So yeah, we're doing fantastic. And in addition to that, we've got at least some semblance of a castle here. We have a gold. And we have some space to run if things go south. The opponent has their opponent's attack is in the middle our attacks kind of in the middle uh, our kings on the edge so that's a huge plus to an early escape of the kings worth eight moves uh, it's a proverb it's known uh this gets messy oh man uh, i don't know how you look at this uh, yeah, this is a tense position. Uh, dropping the silver was really cool, but also led to some fun tactics. Uh, which were fun. Because, like, nobody wanted to... Like, this gets really ugly, doesn't it? 
Um, so our attacking speed is one move to check it, but then the king runs away, and that's no fun. So we probably want to throw the bishop drop in here first. So I think our attacking speed is more like two. Uh, the opponent's speed to get a safe check on our king. I mean, they... Like, okay, say they do drop the rook. Because dropping the rook accelerates something toward the king. Just cut it off. Uh, oh, for them to get a check in, though, I guess they could just... No, our silver covers that. So they'd have... Without hanging pieces, how many turns is it going to take them to attack our king? I think it's still four. One, two, three, four. I don't see a faster way to hit this king. Um, meanwhile, like for Senta, it's bishop drop and then uh, a rook drop or lance drop on the file. So we have an attack speed of two. So our attack is much faster. Our castle is more solid because we have three pieces and supposed to two. Um, and we're constantly... Well, they're winning pieces too. This is kind of balanced. And I guess that's what makes it so freaky to look at is it is so balanced that you kind of want to... You'd like to be having an advantage throughout the game, but you can't always have that benefit. Um... But yeah, pawns are also quite good at blocking bishops. So it's just another pattern. And I've frequently, like every game I play on Shogi Wars, I drop my bishop, and then some knight or pawn or some other piece cuts off my bishop, and my can't, bishop can't go anywhere. And I realized, oh shoot, I shouldn't have dropped it so early. So like this also just completely shuts down the uh, line on Lance here. I don't know how like you would think okay i guess this pawn drop reopens things um and i guess they're threatening dropping on here which splits this up it's it is messy um but maybe it's fine cuz this way we win we're winning material while also accelerating our attack against the king, maybe. It's super sharp. But how do we even get here? Um, so we got here by trying to... The opponent did some, like, dropped a silver against our silver. <sighs> so could we... Um... I don't want to exchange rooks here. Is this fine? No, it's that's no better. Uh, yeah, the bishop drop by the opponent looks really clever. Oh, okay. I was just not accepting that this was okay. Yeah, there we go. That took me like five minutes. Um. But it decides the game more or less, so maybe it's time worth spending. I don't know. Um, yes, yeah, so if the opponent retreats, we've accelerated our attack. We could even get up the land, so it doesn't matter. Because um, we have such a strong attack going here. And if they take, that's a fork. And this is still hanging. There's a proverb about keeping the king and the rook apart. And there's reasons to keep them apart. Um, yeah, I mean, you could say, oh, they get to counterattack here. You might even be able to give up the bishop here. I don't know. Um, like, I don't know. So if the opponent tucks their rook behind their pawns, um, you don't want to immediately check because then the king runs away and... An escaping king, um, an early escape of the king is worth eight moves. But there's got to... No, this can't be right. Uh, we don't want to give that bishop away just yet here. This looked so cool. And yet I'm not seeing the next move here. Like, I kind of like this, but this gets kind of dodgy. Maybe. 
promoting to attack the silver. Yeah. I feel like I missed something huge here, though. Oh. Um, so in chess, you can often invert the move order to good effect, too. And maybe that applies in Shogi. So we kick this bishop, we give up a lance, doesn't matter. Go after this, trap the rook. Yeah, it looks kind of fun. Yeah, we're down a lance, I don't care. This looks fun. I'd play this. We're hitting the knight. We can move the silver away and... Well, I guess, like, they could take the knight, but then we win the rook. So they're not going to do that. I still feel like I've missed something huge here, somehow. I don't know what. Oh, well, another idea, besides all this. So we tried silver here. That was interesting. Um, silver here. It's supported by this and allows us to keep our pawns where they're at. This is the cleanest way to just say, hey, buddy, why'd you drop the bishop here? What are you doing? Uh, I think the answer is nothing. Um, yeah, they can't... I don't... Well... Can they get away with this? Why would they bother? I don't know, but... Um... Oh, right. So they could sacrifice material uh, in exchange to activate this. But... I mean, we get that. So... This looks fine. Yeah, I, I felt that I was missing something here. So this is just another idea. I don't know if it's the best, or there might be something else. Like, ah, uh, what about that? That looks kind of fun too. Um, and if the rook takes, we drop a piece and we hit the rook. If the bishop takes, we drop a piece and we hit the bishop. Uh, this stuff is all super sharp. Um, but the reason I'm having to look at all this is probably because there might have been something simpler earlier on. Um, so, this is, again, one of those things that just isn't immediately obvious, but, um, yeah, way, way back here when we gave up a tempo, that tempo came back and made all these other variations harder. Um, whereas if we, like, don't give ground and don't give up a tempo, uh, we don't have to look at all that other stuff. Um, so, anyway... That's something an engine's not going to tell you. Um, humans probably won't tell you that either. Let's get out of the opening. I apologize. I don't know this opening so well. Oh. So, yeah, this looks fine. This looks fine. It's all well and good. Opponent, um, they're doing the best they can to stir up an attack. Uh... So, yeah, we take the lance, and we want to use that lance to participate in an attack against the king. This is this is going excellently here. Uh, opponent sacrifices the rook, because they see that they don't want to give up the rook for a lance. Okay, that's cool. Uh, and then we check. And then all of our problems begin with this check. So, yeah... Enough tournament losses of chess games um, will teach you you need to look at uh, candidate moves um, at pivotal positions. And here the opponent just sacrificed a rook. The king's a sitting duck in the center of the board. Um, Shogi Harbor's Road to Shodan series, uh, episode one. Uh, weak king falls easily talks about the importance of like building a castle and um how like yeah it's kind of fun to just have target practice on an open king like that so this is kind of a pivotal position um so the opponent uh while their king is sitting in the middle of the board has forked two of our pieces um 
And so yeah, one option to deal with this is to check and try to force the king somewhere. And then yeah, we do win the land. Uh, we do win the silver. Some tactical complications resulted from that. Um, another candidate is this. So yeah, again, if you are just like bloodthirsty, you you want to win every game. <laughs> um, you need to like. Yes, you found an excellent move. Look for a better move. This, I think, is a better move. Um, at least forces the opponent to come up with something more creative. Like, I don't know, maybe they do this or something. And then they attack the rook, and I don't know. I think they're running out of pieces here. Um, but no, what was come up with here, what he, what he found, I think was still quite good. But it does get complicated. Um, so this is good. This is good. This is check. This also traps uh, the horse, which I guess you're going to say it's going to go this way anyways. And so you're trying to win the knight. You're trying to do... Um, and unfortunately, this ran square into a tactic. And like, uh, this happens. Uh, this happens to everyone. It's a learning experience each time it happens. And then you try to figure out, oh god, what do I do next time? Because yeah, I've done that so many times. It hurts. Um, um, but then this like further reinforces. Okay, now what? We're already in time pressure. We don't have a ton of time to think. We do have to list off our candidate moves and try to figure out like a good candidate move here. Um, so bishop takes silver. I get it. We want to have a safe castle. We want to. We want everything to go well here. Um, but if we have a second, and maybe we do, maybe we don't. Spend a little time looking at this, uh, especially if we have a Yomi, and if we're comfortable with the Bioyomi period, if we think like we could come up with the rest of the game in our Bioyomi time, then it's easier to just say I'm going to spend more time looking in the middle game. But if we're kind of panicky in Bioyomi, I kind of get it. We don't have time to look at this kind of thing. Um, but this goes back to the concept of attacking speed earlier, right? So, oops, that's not a promotion. I mean... Yeah, <laughs> there you go. That's the concept. Yeah, the question is, is silver takes, whether you promote or don't promote here, I don't know even which is better. Is this a threat mate? Because, uh, yeah, Rico notes, hey, that looks spicy. That looks spicy. That looks spicy. This looks like, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the question is, is Silver takes here a threat mate? Because this, uh, our speed of our attack, now that we've done, now they've done this, now that we've done that, our speed to, like, safely, uh, checking the opponent's king is one, two lights out. They've got two moves to come up with a mate. Or they get KO'd. Not exactly, but this is like, yeah, this is strong. And this is just one variation, by the way. This is not the only variation. So, like, okay, say that somehow the silver takes is a threat mate. We could take it. They have a rook. Are we afraid of a rook? Maybe. I'm afraid of a rook. I have a very strong pro rook bias. Um, I <laughs> I will often trade to get a rook and then struggle to figure out how to use it. Um, so um, no, but here like we've got this is defending stuff. This is defending stuff. We've got a nice defense of this side of the board. So we've we've built a castle. We're fine, right? Yeah, so, but this is just a fallback variation, and okay, yeah, maybe we don't like getting our pieces cornered, and maybe, I don't know, this is super uncomfortable for some reason, and so 
we might be more bloodthirsty and see that, hey, we're attacking this way, but also threatening this. I completely missed this, and they don't even have a pawn to block here. Yeah, uh, so I stand corrected. This We have a distance to give a safe check of one. I misread that. I thought this was like the fastest attack, and I was happy having an attack speed of two, but we have an attack speed of one. We're threatening to take that, check the king, they block with something, and then we just like bring in all the pieces in the world, and like it's maybe even if we have extra time, bring in a pawn to support it. I don't know. Um, that probably doesn't mate. Probably this knight drop with the speed of two is actually stronger because this castle's so fragile because the opponent hasn't built a proper castle here. But um, yeah, it comes down to like what's the speed of this attack versus the speed of that. And um, yeah, the, the speed of this, we have a silver out in no man's land. They have a silver on the bottom row of the board uh, a distance of three from our king. So, uh, you could contend that, well, this is check and they get away with that, right? I'm not sure they get away with this. Um, this traps the rook. So, uh, I don't know that they have that. So, like, the attacking speed of the opponent here, I don't know how to read. Uh... Oh, crap, we got a lance on the fifth file? Now you tell me. <laughs> Wait, what? Okay, so, like, say they take the knight or something. Uh, takes gold 3-1. That's a mate? I'm bad at Sume. Uh, gold 3-1. Oh my gosh. I forgot we... Hey. Hey. <laughs> the bishop's still there. Oh, crap. Wow. Okay. Well, I feel dumb. Uh, yeah. So, um... Wow, well, I've been doing things the hard way here. Anyway, so, like, yeah, the... And we even went through the effort to put this here to support all these beautiful ideas. Uh, this would have looked so much more convincing if I just saw, like, this and mate. Because we have this and that. Uh, I mean, I intuitively felt that there was something here, but, like, my pattern recognition kind of sucks. But we're learning. Um, yeah, so there's that. There's probably other... So the opponent normally would prefer to have pawns or golds or something to, like, defend this, but yeah. Yeah. So, uh, attacking speed. Uh, this is extremely fast. This, the opponent has a silver out in no man's land. They have a silver on the edge of the board where it still can't hit the king. It's, like, super far away. So they'd need... If they had an attack, it would only be the rook all by itself doing the attack. Or maybe it would be this pawn coming through. And once the pawn comes through, then a rook drop and promoting behind our king could be a big threat. Um, th there are ways they can pull off an attack here, but the silver out in no man's land, like, when I see this kind of drop, um, I do take a sigh of relief. Um, so that's like way back here. That's a silver that could have been used to attack the king, or could have been used in defense, could have been used any number of useful ways, but instead they're trying to like win a knight instead of aim for the king. So like when I see this, I, I do take a sigh of relief. Um, I do uh, still try to read everything out because there's a ton to read, but yeah. It, oh, but yeah, another thing, like inverting the move order here, you still have this and then Lance drop. I don't know. There's a ton to read. Is losing the Rook so bad? Maybe. If losing the Rook is so bad, maybe play this first. I don't know. But, um, 
but yeah, it's really cool to watch uh, Morinaka and um, Eriko Yamaguchi and other uh, pros put videos on YouTube showing, like, here's how to conduct an attack. I can't remember just how many videos, like, um, um, other folks have done on this sort of concept, but I'm sure uh, as I post this game review, folks will comment about what's actually out there. Uh, okay, wait, this happened, oh, this happened in the game and this won a bishop. So yeah, we had some unfortunate tactics here. It's no big deal though, right? We've got a castle. We've got a rook and a, a, a gold general here. So we still have a ton of pieces defending our king. The silver's still useless. Our lance is still threatening to promote, and we could drop pawns, and the opponent has no pawns in hand, so we have a quick attack going. Um, we're also threatening to win more pieces, so that's kind of nice too. But um, yeah, to, to collect our uh, mind here might take a second. Gold 5 eight's fine. Uh, moving the rook up to try to trade rook, or well, no, actually moving the rook up would be kind of spooky because the silver would start hitting the rook and it becomes a huge target so the opponent did this exchange i don't understand it um they did this drop and unfortunately we gave up a move here um every move counts even in this position so instead of like letting them chase the rook twice um yeah just make them spend an extra move to get this gold closer to the king so we could run away in one move instead of two if we're running away and i think we are because our position's kind of weak on the back ranks at this point like giving a rook in this position i have a strong pro rook bias yeah i keep arguing that the rook by itself can't do much damage but now there's a gold supporting this attack too so it starts to get a little bit more serious. When did this lance end up here? Because it's a pity we can't just move the rook up here because the lance is in the way. But uh, that lance ended up here from back there. So if we <laughs> if we had a crystal ball and if we knew it was going to happen, um, we would have prepared an extra space for our rook to run up here, I guess. We didn't have the crystal ball. That's too bad. But it's, yeah. It's pretty rare for Lance to be so far up the board in an, at any event. Um, but it's also pretty rare to have multiple pieces blocking our rook like this. Um, yes, with central file rook, there is the 5-5 five five vanguard pawn that supports attacks on the adjacent files with the silver behind it. But... In general, you want to keep the rook on an open file. But yeah, tactically, that's just not how things worked out here. Um, but yeah, I kind of like... I, I keep... Yeah, never mind. Let's keep going. So anyway... Yeah, the opponent did this curious trade. Um, we could maybe... I don't know. I don't know. No, this is fine. This is fine. This got spooky because we gave the opponent a free tempo, and now they do this fork, and it looks kind of spooky. Um, I liked this response. This is brilliant. This, like, reminds the opponent, hey, who's attacking here? <laughs> yes, my lance is hanging, but, um, yeah, I'm the one attacking. This is excellent. I'm impressed. Uh, yeah, like I probably would have come up with something a little more cowardly, like dropping a pawn out here, or I don't know, taking the knight, then being able to drop the knight, and then we've given them a knight, and that's so bad. But here, our lance is hanging, but they can't take both the lance and the rook, so they have to pick one. Uh, surprisingly, they pick the rook. Uh... I guess that goes with check. That's why this is happening. 
works. Otherwise, you normally, like, if your king is kind of a sitting duck here, you'd want to... Okay, never mind. So, speed of an attack. Um, the opponent does get to drop a rook, so they have a speed of one. Um, yeah, getting this out here. But that's not a prolonged attack. It actually just helps our king escape. And then after this has happened, it takes them several moves. I guess they have to like drop the silver um, and then move the gold over. So ignoring this rook drop thing, uh, so if we completely forget about that, the speed of their attack is silver drop, gold over, gold takes gold. It takes them three moves to land something that checks our king and breaks our castle and doesn't let our king escape. So they have a speed of three. Do we have a threat mate faster than three here? I wish. It'd be so nice. Maybe we do. It's starting to get iffy. Um. Oh man, I wish I were better at Sume. That'd be helpful. I don't wish enough that I'd actually practice as much as I need to, but um. Let's see if I'm trying to digest this i want to start with this move because that's lined up with the king here and so this is threatening one two that looks like threat mate um yeah a lot of sumo shenanigans are kind of not easily doable here they could maybe also spend a move um like this, or this, or something, I don't know, to make an escape hatch. So, yeah, all the craziest, like, night drop sacks or other sacrifices are all kind of cut off by this silver. So, this is... Oh, is this, like, boat castle or something? But it's got the silver up here. I don't know what you call this. I... I don't know. It's like a fortress, except the golds are in the wrong spot and are under attack. Um, and the opponent has no pawns in hand to stop us from attacking. But um, anyway, it looks like, yeah, Rick drop. Uh, so one, two, three is our speed. And the opponent's speed looks like silver drop. Gold, gold. So it's roughly three to three here. Um. Uh oh. Oh. So, okay. Yeah. So now that we've come up with this first order estimate of like which attack looks fastest, if it's kind of tied like this, you actually have to calculate it. But if it's not tied, you can just say, "Oh, my attack is way faster." Or their attack is way faster, but we're unfortunately having to read this out and figure out like what's actually safest. Now, probably we escape everything that they ever set up by just like making one pawn push, but it takes time to do that. Um, but um, yeah, Rico's contention is, hey, we've got threat mate here. We don't really need to worry so much about. Um, Oh, that is pretty serious, isn't it? Oh. Why did I think there was a, their attack was faster here? Because I'm bad? <laughs> right, this tries to line up the same tactic in the game with the rook and that, but... Uh, yeah, so 3-3, three to three, but Senta strikes first. Because it was Senta's move at the head of the variation. So, yeah, they can't just ignore this. Um, See, so yeah, you came up with this, like, speed estimate of three, rook drop, takes, takes. If they do take back, like, then that gives us a free move to take back again. So, yeah, our speed's three, their speed is three. I'm not even sure that this mates, but it's just, like, how quickly can they get to us? Yeah, they might need to also drop the rooks, so maybe their speed's more like four. I don't know. Um, but that that's super sharp. Much of the earlier game, their king was just a sitting duck in the middle of the board. We had it surrounded, or could have surrounded it, but it, it got away. 
and the fact that this got away and we gave us some tempos earlier and the opponent gave us some tempos too it's kind of made this more complicated and yeah we can make things work but it just gets harder and harder throughout the game unfortunately but uh shogi's complicated uh that's why we like it um so yeah here uh oh yeah the so even though I got this indicated here, we don't actually have a bishop on this square. I guess a bishop on the square would... Actually, let's take a look at that. That looks pretty funky. Unless the opponent's got something to stop this. Like, maybe they do that? But, yeah, okay. I thought we could win a tempo here or something uh, to make our attack more effective. Um, and we do get the tempo, but, uh, is it worth it? Hmm. I kind of like this. Even though I don't see a mate at the end of the tunnel, even though the opponent just got a dragon, the dragon's not going anywhere. Um... But we gave up a pawn to do this, so now the opponent can defend with this pawn, so that's why this is no good. That's why my thinking is not the right thinking here. Uh, pawn seven, pawn five nine is unnecessary. Um, See, so yeah, I just lead off with this, or maybe with a pawn drop, I don't know. There's got to be some way to get this attack moving. Um... Anyway, they check us. Um, then they are so afraid of our fierce attack that they take our hanging piece um, to stop our attack from... I guess this is pretty fierce. Yeah, they kind of have to do this. But this would, like, walk straight into that. Um... I guess they take that, and then I'll look. And uh, where did the castle go? Was there a castle here somewhere? I thought there was. I don't know. Um, so, I guess this kind of complicates things. Um, I don't want the king to keep running away either. Uh, and they still have some material left to attack with. Oh, could they bring the gold back? Like here? Or where Where would they bring it back? Uh, I guess like that? Uh, yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah, sidestep all this. Because otherwise... Oh, I see. Yeah, you're saying if they take the pawn... We drop another pawn, they could just retreat straight back here. Yeah, I guess that's possible. Um, and we just gave them a pawn in hand, too. That damn pawn in hand is always going to cut off our attack in the back row, so... Yeah, I'm just crazy. I'm wanting to see tactics that aren't there. And if I practice more Suma, I'd know, like, what I'd have to do to set something up that actually works. Uh, instead of just making stuff up here. Um, so yeah, maybe this is the right idea to begin with here. Uh, as long as we're not getting mated, I don't know. So our speed is after this. So this is one drop and a second to move. So our speed, I guess, is two to give a safe check. The opponent obviously is going to defend against this, but every time they defend, that gives us an extra move. Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't know how to continue this attack, though, so maybe the rook drop here isn't right. If we try to do something here, they have an anchor, lance, oh, but then this is when we bring this in. But yeah, every time they spend a turn defending, that gives us another free attacking move. So our that's why speed can be estimated in this way. It's like, 
one, two. Um, so it takes us two moves to check them. How many moves does it take them to check us? I guess they'd have to drop the silver one, two, three. So our speed is two, their speed is three. Um, so our attack is at least one move faster, but also we're Senta, we move first in this, so. Uh, yeah, we have like a speed advantage of two here. Um, that's not guaranteeing that we're going to mate. It's just saying like, how quickly can I contact the king to like make something that's going to spook the opponent? And if it does checkmate, so much the better. But if not, the opponent is going to have to do some things to defend against what we're throwing at the king. Um, yeah, playing the bishop here is great. This pawn drop, also, I like it a lot. Um, uh, possibly faster is the same idea out here. Um, maybe they drop something like this to slow us down. But then this hits... Then they've lost an attacker. Now their attack speed is... I don't know. They don't have an attack. And when they do take, we've got the rook supporting this and the bishop support... Oh. Wait, do we have mate now? No. It'd be cool, but... Rook takes, gold drop is not mate. Um, but yeah, we got super strong attack going at this point. Uh, because we... Instead of giving check, we've lined up a piece, and then we lined up another piece, and the opponent keeps spending a turn to defend, and spend a turn to defend, and they've given away anything they can use to attack here has been placed in defense. Um, yeah, pawn drop is excellent, too. Um, got spooky, though. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so, I guess you're asking, like, yeah, we very much want to drop a rook and a gold back here. That's what we want to do, if we can do it somehow. There should be many lines where this is possible, but then the instant we do this, the opponent's just going to like spend one turn defending. And we'll have forced them to spend a turn defending, but um, yeah, it's, it's a very key idea. Oh, the line where they protected... The line where... Oh, okay, the line I was just looking at. Um... Um, so could we drop the gold? Oh, yeah, actually, yeah, that makes sense. I just, like, this is the last thing I'd ever consider, because, um, it's a gold on the back row. Uh, but since the opponent's castle that I put here, since this is such a flimsy castle, uh, yeah, that's the way to smash it. And then, yeah, this breaks through instantly. So I put the silver here because I didn't see that. The silver drop doesn't work for that very reason. Yeah, my initial instinct was to put the silver here instead because this is actually a shape. It's not a great shape, but it is a shape. Uh, now this fails for a different reason. Uh, I just take here. Again, our speed is, like, ridiculous compared to theirs, so... Uh, hmm. I don't know. I thought this was good. Maybe not. Maybe it's too much. Well, there's no reason for us to do something so insane here. Oh, we got pawns. This is why we have pawns. One there, one there. Yes, yeah, so this breaks up that shape. Um, But also, yeah, maybe even gold drop here. I don't know. This probably doesn't work, because the king just runs away. Uh, I don't know. We take one of these. Something like this, but the king keeps running. Yeah, this gold drop in, in that specific circumstance is definitely the right thing to do. But in this circumstance, it's not. <laughs> but yeah, when I built this, like, shape where only the king defends the silver. Yeah, just remove the defender. 
that makes a ton of sense. Uh, yeah, here we just want to get the, we want to unblock the rook. So the fastest way to unblock the rook is with this. So our speed's one, two, three, mate. Uh, the opponent lost their attacking silver because they put it in defense here before we gave them pawn. So, um, yeah, they don't really have a lot of... I mean, I guess, again, they could try to prepare to run the king somehow, uh, but every time they try to run, they're spending a move. And every move they spend running, we can spend another move attacking, and every move that we do that is free. So, it's good that we built a castle with one gold here, because that wards away both this gold and this rook that aren't coordinated. It's good that we have this bishop, otherwise the rook and gold would coordinate um, along this line, and we'd be facing some serious problems between this and the silver. But since the opponent can't coordinate an attack, um, like, we're kind of in Zetto or whatever, I'm sorry, the, the way they'd have to do it is like one, two, three. So they've got a speed of three here. But the minute they do that, we just like kick them away. The, yeah, we've given away our gold. Um, that's kind of sad, but we've got pieces. We've got pieces. We've got high hopes. So yeah, our king, at least at the moment, looks a lot safer. Um... So, yeah, the opponent um, forces us to exchange gold generals here. And they do, to their credit, cut off our bishop, which is our best attacking piece. We could renew the attack, but our king is under fire here. So this is starting to get messy. Rook drop 6-1 is excellent. Um, yeah, it reminds the opponent that, hey, we're still the one attacking. We have the silver drop, forking king and gold, and forcing the king into the corner. Actually, no, this is, it's not a handicap game. It's just a really wild opening that led to some exciting tactics. Okay, we do this fork, um, but the reason the opponent pulled back the silver was to give the king somewhere to escape to. So, I, 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 yeah, this is, this got unfortunate pretty quickly. Because the opponent's threatening to cut off our rook with all their pieces. Because um, bishop takes 6-4, taking the gold's a threat. Oh, duh, okay. Yeah, we had Rook and Gold on the back rank, so this defends against all that. So, like, none of these... I'm sorry, the Gold defends the Silver, but the Silver doesn't defend the Gold. So, like, they have a brittle castle, but it is a castle. And, yeah, we do strike at it, we do break this apart. That, that's okay. Uh, oh, sorry, yeah, I should explain. Like, um say they do something else here like take that i guess um say we take this that they take us back uh this is the key idea yeah, let's check check and then rook promotes mate um that's uh the mate threat here so that's why they're opting to take time to defend against this yeah yeah uh, so it makes sense that they defend against it. Um, and yeah, this is, again, this is starting to get complicated here, because um, the opponent's got a lot of pieces defending their king. We're threatening to win a lance. We're threatening to win a knight. Um, we're trying to go after their king. They're threatening to win our lance a knight and also break up everything we have over here. So, oh dear. And if we try to, oh, we can't bottom pawn here because we have a pawn up there already. Uh, this is so messy. 
This check, an early escape of the king is worth eight moves. I really don't like this check, even though it wins a gold general. But it puts our silver and our rook and everything so far away from the king. But how else can we make progress here? It's not easy. Like, we've had easy chances, and uh, just it's... Things are falling apart here, unfortunately. Oh, I'm sorry. Um... I've done this sort of thing, too, where dropping a gold solidifies the castle, but uh, there's, again, a silver on the bottom rank. Uh, it can't move sideways, so, like, it only hits this square. So it looked like we were reinforcing the castle, but moving this also reinforces the castle and gives us the rook gold mate thread immediately. Uh... And since our bishop actually covers the square, like, I guess they could attack like this, but that costs them a gold. Uh, yeah, no, I, so it's hard under fire and under time pressure to come up with all these ideas. But if you've gotten mated by this kind of gold drop versus gold retreat thing before, um, more candidate ideas, more, more move ideas come to mind. Uh, gold drop 3-9 just loses one turn, basically, because the silver shouldn't be here. The opponent should know that. They, they should have encountered some previous games that were like this and realized that silver drop, gold retreat, traps their silver. Uh... So, but, um, also, like, oh, I keep wanting to do a pawn drop here, but it's still not possible, cause, okay, damn it, never mind. Oh, it's such a challenging position, but yeah, we're having to do something to respond, because their speed is finally faster than ours here. Um... I mean, during the game, one thought that occurred to me is just, like, throw a monkey wrench in this. Um, but that costs us material, and that's no fun. Um, uh, I hadn't considered this. this. No, with the lance in the middle, this is not worth considering. Yeah, we're under attack. How did we get here? Oh, okay, they dropped... I see, so they dropped this, and we wanted to break the castle. Um, that's how we got here. Yeah, I keep wanting to do this again and again and again, and, like, this might be our best chance to do it. Um, just really breaking up any possibility of an opponent doing anything here. Um, or anything easily. Uh, because, yeah, they've built a castle. We've kind of chased them into the castle. We did put a bishop in support of this attack, and they, they've cut us off. So now they've got, if we count attackers and defenders, we've got one attacker. And they've got, uh, one, two, three, four pieces defending. Maybe the lance, too. Um, yeah, the... Things, yeah, we would love to have a horse back here defending this. Horses are wonderful defensive pieces. Um, I mean, the horse got us this initiative in the first place, but the king ran away because we kept checking it, and we didn't have a follow-up, unfortunately. Um, so the horse did its job, but... We'd love to have that in defense, of course, because it'd make the defense a lot easier. But, um, yeah. So the bu opponent built up a speedy attack, because they've probably played a lot of games and they know exactly how to attack. They land this with gain of time. So they keep playing all these things that gain time, although that cost them a gold to get some time. And then they play this in defense. Um, so this is them saying that, like, uh, 
that I guess they need to do this to defend themselves. I guess is what they're trying to say here. <sighs> and that, like, hmm. so we got a bishop. Yeah, I don't know. They want to take the pawn. Oh, but they can't take the pawn until the bishop's blocked. So they're offering up either an option of us taking the lance and we give up another move. Um, we've already kind of half given up a move because they've cut off our bishop, but um, it's a choice between we take the lance and that's our entire turn and they start taking everything we have and love and hold dear here. Or we try to defend against this stuff down here. Um, but that's also kind of really hard to do. So I'm not going to fixate on this move sequence. Uh, I know I keep bringing it back up, but um, it's hard to do better than what was done here. Uh, the opponent gives this check because uh, they stopped counting. Um, like They chase us into the corner. And we've got lots of generals we can drop to support our king here. And so yes, this is check. <laughs> they, they're they making the same kind of error of chasing a king out of harm's way that we kind of unfortunately made. Where we had the king locked in right where we wanted it, now it's run away. Uh, I'd play this. And then this threatens that. Sorry. Uh, this is... Uh, so... Like, this looks terrifying. I don't know what I'd do against that. But, um... Uh, so... I guess they don't have a gold general in hand is kind of our silver lining, because they placed it all the way back here. Why did they even place it back here? They wanted our pawn. That's the idea, is they wanted a pawn. I mean, eh. they had a better option to get the pawn here. You're referring to like, well, no, this silver retreat doesn't mate the king. Um, <sighs> oh, gold 6 3. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm missing something here. It's fine. I was going to try to make a point about how this looks kind of interesting. Um, so, like, while we're breaking apart the castle, and we're doing this as fast as we can, they still have many pieces defending their king, and we are kind of in a tight spot here. Um, unless I'm missing something. So, like, yeah, the... Anyway, I don't need... the. This got complicated. Both players are in time pressure. A lot of crazy stuff can happen in time pressure. I don't need to belabor this point. And it's fine. The, even this... We got in this really messy position. It's fine. Okay, we gave up. Oh, like, okay, we lost a silver. It's fine. Yeah, we're going to lose our horse, which is doing nothing. Or we're going to have to move our dragon. And so we get a dragon. This is great. This dragon's back here doing nothing. It's fine. Like, it's totally a okay. Nothing to worry about. It's all about the king at this point. We check. The king runs away. And now we're in deep shit. <laughs> so, uh, it's kind of unfortunate. Um, the cake... Um, I mean, I guess they're threatening to, like, drop a gold here, and maybe they can bring a castle together. I don't know. Um, like, maybe we just throw this in while everything's already on fire. We'll just put this bit of the fire with the rest of the fire, and, like, hopefully... Oh, we don't even have to do that. Like, what's this piece? This is a... Is a lance? Yeah. Well, I guess a lance isn't enough. 
Never mind. Um, hmm. Can't you bring the bishop back with the opponent's king? Uh, I don't understand. I mean, we could threaten this. This looks kind of nice. Um, we've got several pieces to attack with. The op oh, I guess the opponent... I thought they had two golds in hand, and so they'd have enough to both attack and defend, but they don't. They've got one gold in hand. Uh, bishop 7-7. Seven, seven. Oh, here! I mean, we're still going to move the pawn out of the way if we're doing that, right? Um... Or are you referring to something else? So, like, we've opened the diagonal here. I like moving my pieces forward. Um, yeah, so... Knight 3-6 threatens silver 2-2 two, two mate. Yeah, this is what I'm trying to find a way to make it work. I keep coming up, like, one piece short here. So I'm having to rethink it. Um, I keep wanting to suggest, like, surrounding the king here with a uh, silver 2-2 two -two made threat or if the opponent does something crazy then like well silver 2-2 two -two still mates there um if they put a gold here then we've got this check and that mate uh probably there's some other mates in the middle of the board somehow i don't know i keep wanting to justify knight 3-6 but um I think we're one piece shy here somehow. And yeah, the opponent's got to react to this. And so we get a huge initiative instead of a mate. Um, and that's probably... Like, if they don't play gold 2-2, two, two, I think they're in trouble. Um, Yeah, the more times they have to spend both a move and a piece defending, the better our position gets here. Now you could argue, well, can't the king escape this way, right? Is there an escape? And if you're playing the game, you have to read this stuff. Um, but... Uh, is there an escape? I mean, surely there's this exchange whenever we want or need it. Um, but then they take our knight. But then we take everything. and I don't know. It's complicated. If the opponent uh, saw this stuff, kudos to them. Uh, but yeah, I don't... Like, as much as I want to play knight 3-6, this running king possibility is... It's a bit much. Um, so, yeah, the bishop back. Normally, this is kind of a cool idea, except the opponent's just going to drop a pawn on 5-5 five five or something sometime along the way. That's why I'm trying to move the bishop up instead of down to pull off an attack here, but it's, it's not trivial. There surely is some idea here. Um... Yeah, this knight drop looks really cool. Silver drop 3-2 almost. Knight drop, pawn 3-5. Bishop takes gold. Pawn takes one of the pieces. Silver 4-5. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of pieces attacking. Um, I just want like a knockout winning move here. Like This looks awesome. Um, but I guess maybe it's not as awesome as it looks. Um, oh, but yeah, my point here is that this dragon, it came back and it took a piece and it took another piece, but a bishop, um, doesn't break this castle. A bishop could maybe defend while attacking, but it's kind of hard to do here. Um... And the silver that they took also isn't really well poised to hit this. If they had a lance, they could hit this, but they don't have a lance. Because they just never got one. Um, so, yeah, we 
it's super hard for them to attack us. Uh, how many moves would it take them to check us without losing a piece? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to count it. So here... Uh, yeah, if I just, like, do null move pruning, say, like, black is just going to move piece, move this pawn over and over. Yeah, while black's doing this, how can, um, or while Senta's doing this, how can Gota, um, manage any attack here? I'm looking. Uh, because if I'm going to measure speed, I need to have something to compare with here. I guess this is the weak point. Like, a silver can't easily hit this. They don't have a knight. They could get one. But yeah, either between taking this knight, which takes this away from the ability to break the castle, or um, they could start building an attack on this point. This is the weakness to aim for, because like our knight defends this. Our pawns kind of defend each other up front here. And we've got a pretty strong uh, defense from the side, too. So, like, it's going to have to be this is the weak point. So their speed hitting that would be... Um, ignoring the gold here for a second. Um, their speed... Uh, let's say bishop drop, silver drop, or something like that, or gold drop. Um, and then they take here. So that's a speed of three to hit our king. And it's not even a fatal hit, because we've got many pieces defending and we can run away a little bit. But So optimistically for them, uh, they have maybe threat mate in three, but it's not a real threat mate. For us, uh, for Senta, uh, we've got like threat mate in two and it actually works so the opponent has to respond to our threats if we make them but having this extra piece uh bishop in the attack is probably going to make everything a lot more effective too and if they take this or move away or something maybe we got this uh actually no never mind i'm dumb don't do that i wanted that to work but it, it doesn't I'm being dumb. Yeah, knight 6-4. Um, with the idea that we could take this whenever we need it. Seems like the right attitude. Um, and this might be the right time to take it. Because if they take back... Check... Oh, we don't use this one, do we? <sighs> we use the silver here, don't we? I don't know. Um... Sorry, I kept going into variations and deleting variations, but there's something there. Oh, the gold drop is good. I'm sorry, I'm tired. Um, so, yeah, it was instead of this knight drop here, I could consider this. Yeah. And then we take here, and if they take back the bishop so they don't, like, so our bishop doesn't join the attack... Uh, and then this gold drop, we're saying it's good. Um, this is forced. Uh, okay, that's fine. I had the same kind of illusion here. But this has got to be okay, right? Oh, silver 4-5? Um, yeah, I'm crazy here. Yeah, silver 4-5 looks way saner. Um, oh, okay, how does the opponent defend this? I mean, okay, I just sacked a bishop, saying that I'm probably going to bring up some attack. Uh, threatens gold 3-2, well, oh yeah, yeah, this is, this doesn't move sideways, as well as gold 3-4. Well, that hurts. Um, so yeah, if you see this, uh, threat mate, you can get away with such things. I probably would struggle in time pressure to come up with that. I need to find some other 
justification explaining this stuff. Um, I mean, another way to look at it would be this. And so they take our knight, and then we take here. And we still have this. Um, and so uh, they take here or something, and our bishop escapes. Uh, so we just win a gold in broad daylight, or threatening gold drop, gold drop. So that's another way to look at it, but I don't know about this knight drop, though. Like, there's got to be an easier solution somehow. I feel dumb for missing it, whatever it is. Uh, but I do know, like, this check, unfortunately, uh, takes our dragon further away from the king. And now, what variations were already complicated just get much harder, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, even here, it's probably fine. I hesitate to drop, like, our last piece in hand, but... Um, this does come with a threat mate, so the opponent does have to do something in response to it. Uh, yeah. Anyway, sorry, I, uh, I keep rambling here a little bit. Um, well, okay, I think I've come up with what the other point was here. So, the, all these knight drops are all kind of complicated, right? And the opponent just took two of our pieces, and so we're feeling kind of down about it. Um, I think it's okay uh, to realize that, you know, our position's fine. Um, like, we could just bring a piece out, or we could take a lance. Or There's a lot of things we could do here, because we're not under attack. Um, yeah, they have a lot of pieces, but it's just material. It's... Uh, until they convert this into some kind of an attack, we don't really have to worry too much just yet. Um, I think that's maybe the broader point, that even among all this, these tactics and this wild frenzy, it's fine to take a, a breath and calm down and figure out, okay, yeah, I lost a piece. Yeah, I lost five pieces. It's just material. <laughs> In the chess world, you can't get away with that. Yeah. Um, yeah, might as well just take away the lance. And so we could, like, take the lance, and then we, like, we have a lance drop here or there or something. Like, oh, the one on 6-8? Okay. With the bishop. Uh, sorry, I'm spacing out a bit. Oh, that lance! I see. Yeah, so we've defended our king. Uh, we pursue their king a little bit, but we might as Yeah, we can just take this. And this also helps support an attack. Ah, yeah, this is a hid hidden private one. I'll publish it soon. Um, but I wanted to try to run through this before I go to bed. Just because I had a lot of ideas. I I'm starting to run out of those ideas at this point. Um, but yeah, I'll publish it and give other folks a chance to analyze this too. So, yeah. Unfortunately, the king kind of escaped. This got messy and messier. Although, I like this. This uh, made it difficult for the opponent to fully escape their king. So they're actually having to fight back here. And, like, yeah, we are at... I think we're at a material deficit. Maybe it's... It looks about even. We've got a knight. They've got a silver. Uh, it's kind of sad, but our dragon's pretty cool. We're threatening to take a lance. We're threatening a ton of stuff. It's easy to get a bit down on it because their horse is attacking, their gold's attacking, but... Yeah... <laughs> this was cool. So we sacrificed the bishop. Um, and yeah, this this looks so intense, doesn't it? And then we check and the king runs away. It's like, oh, this is so close. Um, um, 
I think the the bishop sacks cool. Well, <laughs> not quite threat mate. Yeah, this got this is blitz. This is Bioyomi. This is kind of wild. Everything's pretty exciting here. Um, bishop takes, pawn takes, dragon takes, 2-3. Uh, yeah, that tries to surround the king. Yeah, that's the most direct way about it. That way you're threatening this gold drop, and if the king is forced to run up, then you can mate it this way. But then the king might run this way instead. And then that becomes the question, yeah, do we drop the gold on 5-5, five, five, and then bring the dragon back. And I can kind of understand being afraid of, like, the opponent's got the stuff they can drop and pursue our king with, and it's kind of spooky. But, um, yeah. This is possible. Um, I th we survive their attack, I think. But their king might escape. I think what was played in the game is fine, too, actually. Um, and this, yeah, we surround the king. It's pretty cool. But, wait, I had some point I wanted. Where was my point? Where, oh, here. Um, wait, yeah. Yeah, well, that's one way about it, but we actually brought our king to safety. Um... And then I had this fun moment during the game. I'm like, you know what I want to do in this position? I want to play this move. That's a threat mate. So I want to do that. <laughs> uh, does it work? Maybe not. Does it scare the crap out of the opponent? Uh, probably. Um... Yeah, they probably just take this gold and it's nothing, but... <sighs> yeah, this is such a wild game, isn't it? Yeah, th this is kind of iconic with the kings, like, fighting it out here. Um, yeah, so this... I mean... If we had more accurate moves earlier, this game would be no fun at this point. Um... So, yeah, your question's like, okay, how do we manage to threat mate the king and actually checkmate it? Um, and I don't see an actual mate here. But yeah, it's such an exciting... <laughs> yeah. I mean, does it matter? The, the, the winners are whoever got to enjoy this game and all that stuff. Yeah, I think this is a good way about it. So, this is threatening mate. Um, yeah. The opponent probably has a ton of checks and this gets all messy and stuff. Uh, well, actually, no, that the king escapes this way. Damn. Uh, yeah, I don't know how to support this attack. It got complicated. And time pressure, anything can happen. I kind of also like the idea of taking the lance to just mess this up further, but it, it doesn't work. So, what's what's the verdict on this stuff? Um, uh, I don't know. You just go gold 4-8, yeah. In a variety, instead of sacking the bishop, yeah. Defend your own king make it harder for the opponent to escape forward. That's pretty sound. That makes sense. We can always get more pieces to support our attack. The opponent's kind of... They'll have to take more pieces to support theirs, and it gets complicated, but they don't have an easy path forward. Oh! Oh, okay, This this might be... When we opened our castle to support the knight, after using the knight to chase forward the king, this is where things fell apart. Um, yeah, 
And that's how we got such an exciting position. But, yeah, surrounding the king instead of letting it run out, or surround it here. Uh, this is pretty cool. But, yeah, I like the position that we got here. It's a really fun position. Um, and then you have this pawn drop to, like, th this hurts. This is really creative. I'm impressed the opponent came up with this. I mean, they kind of have to. They have their back to the wall, so they have every reason to come up with it. But, yeah, at this point, the attack is just over. Um, it's unfortunate, but, uh, we could try to fuel it, but I couldn't find a way. So, yeah, we placed our last piece, both trying to attack and defend, but it just wasn't enough here. So, unfortunately, the opponent takes it this time. Um, oh, yeah, it's a little curious. I guess we took this to try to remove a defender of the king, but they replaced it with another defender. Uh, they just had stronger numbers here. Um, so yeah, the king managed to escape and join its army, and uh, bummer. This stuff happens. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of ideas to consider everywhere. Uh, and like, while well, engines will point out, this is the move, then if you played this, you have an a, a mate in 35 or something crazy like that. Engines will point out, this is a decisive point in the game, and if you played like an engine, this would have been a great way to go. But it helps to review games um, with a community or with an opponent, or helps to watch uh, lessons. I've seen a number of lessons by Shogi Harbor and by Morinaka and Eriko Yamaguchi. I've seen uh, many videos um, and live streams, so like each of these has helped me develop a better understanding. I guess that's the point I really want to try to point out here, is like I recommend the weekly ladder that the Harbor community does, uh, but also, yeah, playing IRL and doing game reviews there with real opponents, uh, uh, that that helps reinforce your understanding of the game too. But yeah, it's so difficult to come up with all the patterns on your own, and so much easier to come up with patterns just copying what other people are doing. <laughs> yeah, just play Shogi Wars 3-Minute. That works only if you learn from every one of your mistakes. And engines aren't going to help you find all the mistakes strategically. Yeah, like, human review is going to come up with a lot of ideas and patterns and things to consider. Engines, they'll have a different way of thinking than we think, unfortunately. Yeah, coming up with your own patterns, uh, like Nimue Castle or whatever, is pretty cool, too. Um... Coming up with it with the aid of an engine, it's a tremendous amount of work, and it helps to, like, uh, copy what other folks are doing instead of inventing it all yourself. With chess, for the longest time I tried to, like, just go it all myself. I'm like, okay, there's the book. If I just do what the book says, I'll be doing fine. Turns out that getting opinions from real experts helps a lot, too. Um, let's take a look. Did we look at 6-4 bishop here? A 97. Uh, I can't see the numbers. Uh, 97 here. 6-4 bishop. Uh, we might have looked at it at some point. Did other move numbers we were looking at this? Um... <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, that looks kind of cool. Uh, yeah, the wonderful thing is uh, whether you're live streaming or just submitting things through Discord or whatever. Yeah, if I did, I deleted it accidentally, but I don't think I considered this yet. 
but yeah, it's great that um, uh, many folks will comment on live streams too, especially, oh, yeah, Alexi <laughs> and uh, Spinal Tap are, uh, they're awesome at this. Uh, this is Sumero. Oh, jeez. Let me think. This is a good exercise. Uh, how? So if I pretend it's not, where? Uh, where might this be? Uh, Three two gold or two two silver. Two two silver was a move that occurred to me. Oh, oh, that's a pattern. That's cool. Yeah, and you got the check, and you got the check. Oops, not that one. Got this check, and the king tries. To oh, it's gonna. Yeah, and then you got this check. Um, I've probably missed something easier. Uh, no? Just drop the gold. Okay. The rook is covering 6-3. <sighs> Why do I have to do things the hard way? Yeah, okay. Point taken. Uh, I thought it was cool, guys, but yeah. That's, we don't, yeah, okay. Ah, see? Pattern recognition. <laughs> uh, yeah. Engines will point out, like, hey, you got this variation and it's mate in five, or whatever. And it will find the shortest sequence, but you can rely on human audiences to correct you and point out, this is the easy sequence, dude. Yeah, humans are good at this stuff. I guess that's the point I'm trying to get across with this uh, review. Is, like, feel free to learn from a lot of folks' experience. Hey! If you play, yeah, and he raises a point. And he's, I think it was mate in 11 or something, but uh, he, no, he did say mate in 17, but um, yeah, if you see a mate and you know it's a mate and you very clearly see it and you just don't see other mates, if that's what it takes to get things done, then, you know, you do it, but then after the game, you learn the better or easier way if it's easier because maybe some future game you'll get to apply the same thing a win's a win definitely so um yeah i will publish this uh, i know alexi also helps uh, he loves to help review games too it's just it's like super late tonight i don't have time to go through all the details of this but yeah um, you know, um, uh, yeah, chances are you or your opponent will spot, uh, the mates in post-game analysis. Relying on an engine can be useful if you're in a hurry, um, uh, but yeah, humans will spot a lot of patterns, like, oh, so yeah, Alexi pointed out there are two patterns here, there was silver 2-2, but then gold, 3, 2, oh, okay. Yeah, as long as I'm sacrificing a piece here anyway. Doesn't matter whether that's a gold or a silver. Okay, that's, yeah. I like keeping all the golds in hand, but, um, yeah, same idea. Okay. Yeah, I couldn't figure out the gold drop because I just refuse to see this idea altogether. Um, but now I see it. Um, and part of the reason I struggle to find this kind of thing is, like, then you have to find this follow-up. Whereas if you start with the silver back here, um, the opponent doesn't have this option. 
So, yeah. This is probably the easier thing to analyze um, and to find in actual games. And it looks cool, too. So, yeah. Yeah. When you're in a hurry, as I often am, and yeah, I don't make time for proper analysis, but um, but when there's people to review with, and there are many, many people anxious to review with folks and teach, um, yeah, this hopefully can be something we can all learn from. And I'm glad to see um, that uh, Lily is uh, helping considerably with the shogi sunday meetings and she's willing to review games uh even for folks that can't be there and maybe check out the vod later or that sort of thing she's glad to help with that too but i think there are also folks in our discord server that you could just put games in a game channel and ask hey here are a couple of my thoughts what do you think about this game um there's a lot of folks that are really eager to help teach um, and help share ideas um yeah and like it'd be great if we had a western uh shogi club or that sort of thing um and uh oh yeah i'm gonna continue plugging the weekly ladder because even if I'm frequently busy and even if I frequently can't manage to play all my games and miss a lot of weekends, the weekly ladders encourage this form of conversation. And yeah, I, I'm just going to continue plugging the ladder and recommending that folks join it. Um, so yeah, it's true the live streams can help a lot. Uh, it's particularly wonderful when... Um, players one on and up are doing great things teaching the community because the the videos and the live streams reach a lot of folks um but even absent that there's still like supernova which gives you a chance to play a lot of games against folks that take it kind of seriously um or as you progress there's also like our weekly ladder or I'm hoping that Lee Shogi will somehow, and I don't know how, become more popular. But yeah. Um, and it's funny, like, yeah, there are many videos I've done where you'll see I've played some Shogi Wars games. Um, I don't think I put that analyses with the engine on YouTube afterward, and frequently it's just me just dropping the game right into the engine and seeing, okay, here's the key points and just being in a tremendous hurry. But, um, yeah, I wouldn't recommend that most people do that. Not if we can manage to bring a human community together. So, again, anyway, that's my key takeaway here is, like, let's build our community and help teach everyone. I know there's a wiki that's being constructed. I don't know much about the contents of it. But I'm hopeful that just between videos and live streamers and other stuff, we can start to build a community. Or we can continue building the community that just keeps on building more and more. Um, and maybe this will help people figure out, like... Because, uh, yeah, when I was playing chess, I just struggled trying to learn things the hard way for the longest time. And... When I started frequently attending chess clubs and chess teams and competitions and such, then uh, that really helped me learn the content so much better than me trying to do things on my own. And that's what I'm trying to impress is that, like, hopefully, whether it's with chess or shogi or whatever other game, um, yeah, take time to learn it as a community. Because that way you can help yourself and you can help other folks and... Um, yeah, there might not be any profit in it, but, um, in terms of actual financial gain or something like that, but it'll still be a fun experience and everyone can enjoy learning from it. Um, yeah, I guess I could also mention this past year I've started playing, um, Mahjong, like the Japanese Mahjong and, uh, attended some clubs and 
I'm hopeful that that sort of community is going to be built too. So, um, yeah, my time is probably going to be divided with, among multiple strategy games, just depending on whichever community is the most interested in collaborating on stuff. Just because that's, I, I find the collaborations interesting. So, yeah, it's all been fun. Thanks for watching, and have a good night.